Does the van drive well in the snow? See what happens when 60 inches of snow falls in Snowbird. And something you didn't know your toilet does in the mountains. Winter safety tips and tricks are coming at ya, and I'll answer your questions. Hey guys and gals, how have you been? I just shredded Snowbird that's right outside of Salt Lake City the past five days. The best powder I've ever skied in consistently. It dumped 60 inches in just a matter of a few days. I hiked up the ridge of Mount Baldy, I hiked up the ridge of a mountain, and then dropped in the side. I was challenged and the van was challenged. See what happens. You're gonna have to see this. I'm not gonna give away too much, but I'll just give you a little teaser. There was snow past the wheel well and you'll have to see what, what doors I couldn't open and what played out. I think the door is frozen shut. I'm also gonna show you what chains I use. They're more actually cables, but I've gone through the whole chains and the whole cables fiasco, and I need your advice on a sound that I am hearing. Hey, does your water tank freeze when you're in the mountains, when you're in the snow? Would you choose the same insulation? And tell us about condensation. So first, I have to fill you in on the latest life and van news. Before I drove 10 straight hours all in one day to Utah, I spent 12 days in the desert and outside of Joshua Tree, it's 29 Palms, at a meditation course. Do not call this a retreat. I will stop you if you ever say retreat. I personally call it prison, and I wrote all about it on my latest Instagram posts. And since I've sat so much recently, for instance, during those 12 days, I sat every single day from 4.30 in the morning until nine at night, and then I sat driving 10 hours one way to Utah, driving 10 hours back to California. Um, my legs have been really spasming lately. I'm obviously not drinking enough water as well. The latest van news, this was something a little alarming. All at once, there were three alerts that popped up on the dash as I was driving to Utah. I kind of think that this has something to do with the climate change, you know, going from warmer Southern California, higher out to a higher elevation, colder climate. I think that kind of propelled or excelled these alerts popping up. Windshield wash fluid, DEF fluid, I've dove into that before with you. That's about every five to 7,000 miles. The symbol that I had never seen before that I had to Google, engine coolant. So I went to AutoZone, spent about $70 on those fluids as well as a windshield wiper. You know, it's great to have all of a sudden your windshield wiper fall off. You have told me, you have warned me. Beware if the engine coolant fluid pops up again because it's not supposed to. This is the first time this has ever happened. I really didn't have to put, put much coolant um, under the hood and the little dispenser, the circular dispenser. The alert went away. So I took out the four fuses that control the lights, that control um, my little USB port to charge my phone, and it also controls the fridge. I do that when I'm gonna be stepping away from the van for more than like three days i'm not going to be in and out of it just because the lights sometimes turn on by themselves because of the touch screen dimmer and i didn't want to run the batteries low i just didn't want to worry about it since the fridge was turned off the fridge now smells when you open it i'm looking into getting an air freshener because this is such a small space you know scent travels very fast and lingers longer. I'm gonna test some out this coming week and I'll let you know next Sunday. Now to the topic you've been waiting for. How does the van perform, handle, and drive in the snow? So the van is two-wheel drive with BF Goodrich Altering KO2 tires. The tire number is LT275-70-17 because they are 17-inch tires. The LT part, is extremely important, I have learned. You know, the signs as you're ascending up the mountain are flashing at you, four-wheel drive vehicles or cars with chains only. I initially bought chains at Walmart on the way up to Big Bear. I picked the largest chain size that Walmart carried. Because it ha is an all-terrain tire, it has, you know, those extra divots. Well, those didn't end up fitting. As I was about to have a meltdown in the Big Bear parking lot, because I had to get these chains on, um, fortunately, that was lifted. Now, I asked one of the chain installers, you know how you pull over and some guys will charge you like 40 all the way up to $80. What is the best chain or cable to buy? 
He said, buy Super Z cables. I'm gonna show you how I install these. So I went on Amazon right before my Tahoe trip at the 1st of January, and I bought Super Z6 cables. The part number is SZ447. The worst part of it is that you just get really dirty because you're on the ground and then you get grease from like the wheel well. Um, but I don't know, I kind of feel like a badass installing these chains on my beefy all-terrain tires. You just gotta use a little muscle, a little strength when you're putting the tension cord on onto the cables to, you know, really tighten them down. Now the issue I am having with these cables, when I drive faster than 25 miles per hour, this is the sound you hear. one time before on Instagram and you said maybe something is loose underneath there. I looked, everything was pretty tight. I also looked for damage like where it was hitting and there was no damage. Like there was no wheel well damage or damage to any of the plastic around the wheel well. Maybe it's the centrifugal force. So I don't know, is this something that I should be extremely concerned about? This knocking sound and I should try a different set of cables. I have driven the van a handful of times in the snow. One, a disaster of a snowstorm. I need to set the scene. Like this was in the first few hours where the roads are the slickest of really heavy snowfall and it was up in Truckee, Tahoe area. Did it slide a little? Yes. A freaking Ford Raptor went into the ditch. So an ambulance spun out like that's how bad, how slick the roads were. And the sliding, the very minor sliding, was isolated to just one thing. I was sitting in this like kind of stop and go traffic, like stop and then inch forward a little. And if I would inch forward, you know, maybe five to 10 feet, I would drive maybe, maybe five miles per hour and then start stopping again. Well, when I started stopping again, even though I'm going super slow, that's when the van would slide a little bit. So I gave extra room between the car in front of me and the van. Would I buy a four wheel drive sprinter? I don't think so, not for the cost. I think the cost of a four wheel drive sprinter is about $10,000 more. Probably pick another van, a van with all wheel drive if that was my focus. I've also driven in light snow, snow that was falling on the interstate, on Interstate 15. Then I took off cruise control. I definitely decreased my speed from the speed limit of 80 to 75 miles per hour. I didn't feel unsafe or that I had the potential of sliding. I've also driven where heavy snow was, but the road was plowed and there were just a few slick spots, mainly under bridges where, of course, the sunlight wasn't hitting the asphalt and you could feel the tires kind of catching, but I didn't spin out. Um, you just kind of went over it and then you waited for the tires to rejoin the dry asphalt. Overall, the van has performed wonderfully and the tires, the BF Goodrich tires, have performed wonderfully in the snow. I have no complaints. Okay, so it is always best to check where the oversized parking is at a ski resort. You have to park in oversized parking there for your own safety. It's such a heavy avalanche area that when they shoot the cannons off, they don't wanna bury your van in snow. Now, you can sleep in these, I'm not gonna say everywhere you can, but I have before slept in these oversized parking lot areas. For instance, the one at Squaw is across the street from the mountain, kind of diagonal. So just check. Now here's a little driving tip I found while um, backing out of a very steep driveway. It's all ice covered. Um, and then at the bottom of the driveway, there's major traffic. Do not put the van in reverse because if you put the van in a gear, then it gives it power, it gives it momentum and thrust. So put the van in neutral and you have more control. When I would put the van in reverse, it would just give it so much speed and so much momentum that one time I almost slid into the ditch because it was just going so fast and then you can't break as fast. If there's cars driving by at the end of the driveway, I was terrified that I was gonna crash into one. Do you remember my number one rule from the previous winter video? It is, I do not sleep in the van if the weather calls for an overnight dumping of more than a foot. That's because I don't wanna run the risk of the snow 
covering up the exhaust pipe for the heater and creating carbon monoxide while I'm sleeping in here. The weather in Snowbird was completely wacko when I was there. It was like 60 inches in three days. Super covered in snow. So thankfully, I was able to stay in an amazing hotel room right at the base of the mountain. I let the van sit from Wednesday morning until Saturday afternoon. And this is what happened. I think the door is frozen shut. Yep, it's frozen. <gasps> yeah, there we go. So something I don't have is a windshield scraper or a snow brush. So it's all by hand right now. <laughs> so I'm clearing all the snow off the roof and this is how much there is. Ah! <laughs> okay, there you see some black. That is how tall it is. So I just tried to tried to drive the van out of this and there's so much snow underneath it that it's created a mound that the back tires like are just spinning out because it can't get over. I was so worried that I was going to have to spend like more than $100 on a tow truck to get me out of there. But thankfully, Snowbird Public Safety, anyone that's up there at the resort on the mountain they will get you out for free. Because I had to push the pedal to the metal and the exhaust pipe was buried in the snow, the van reeked of diesel. As I drove down the canyon, I rolled down the windows and I didn't drive very long. I only drove about 30 minutes in the van before I went to one of my best friend's house in Salt Lake City and just, you know, kind of let it air out before I got back in it. You don't want to, you don't want to be in the van very long when that exhaust smell is in here because it can be hazardous. Now, something you may not think about until it hits you in the face. When you increase your elevation, the air inside the holding tank of the toilet expands and expands and expands and creates all this pressure. And then when you go to use the bathroom and you open up the lever to flush the toilet, you open up the holding tank. Imagine having a bunch of pressure and air underneath and you opening up the lever and it phew, it's like a geyser. Yeah. So <laughs> my tip for you is when you get up to the mountains, before you go to the bathroom, go over to your toilet, flush it, open up the holding tank to release the pressure. Okay, so you sent me questions on Instagram for this video and now I'm gonna answer them. You had some really great questions. Does your insulation do the job? Yes, yes, and yes. I have sheep's wool insulation. It was pretty expensive. I think I spent about three to four hundred dollars just on insulation. When you're going to buy gear for skiing, are you gonna buy a denim shirt? Are you gonna buy a wool shirt? Are you gonna buy a cotton shirt to keep you warm? Personally, I'm gonna buy a merino wool shirt and it's also gonna wick away my sweat. Well, that logical thinking is why I chose sheep's wool insulation for the van. Someone asked, what are the things you really need for the winter time in the van? Well, I covered a lot of that in my previous how to survive winter in the van video. You can watch it on this channel. Um, you need extra blankets. You need a heater, even if it's one of those Mr. Buddy portable heaters, if you're just going up for the weekend. But a heater is really important in the van in the winter because it's gonna protect your components. It's gonna protect your water tank from getting too cold and your water freezing and damaging your pipes. It's going to protect your batteries. It's going to protect your inverter. Um, a heater is not only important for you, it's important for your van. How do you keep the inside of the van 72 degrees without an expensive heater? Um, I don't know. I don't really have a solution for that except a Mr. Buddy heater. I personally don't like a Mr. Buddy heater as a long-term solution. I like it if you're just going up for maybe one or two nights max because it's an open flame, first of all, for my safety. I didn't leave it on overnight because it was an open flame and because it's producing a lot of natural gas. You buy the, the green, the little small, small tanks of propane and you put one on each side, you have two of them, 
and it compressed and compressed and compressed the propane tank so much that it froze the tank and then I couldn't even use the heater. So it was really only limited to using the heater right when I woke up and right before I went to bed just to kind of warm up the van. How do you deal with condensation? I don't have much condensation. I used um, Reflectix after I put in my sheep's wool, which is a moisture barrier over it. It essentially looks like tin foil. The most condensation I've had inside the van is actually on the inside of the main windshield. So the windshield that you look out to drive, instead of scraping the outside of the windshield, which is what you commonly think you have to do, I had to like scrape off the inside with my hand. Overall though, I haven't really had much trouble with condensation. I've, it's very limited. Does the water in the van freeze? Meaning the water in my 17 gallon water tank, which is underneath this bench, does it freeze? I've never had the water freeze inside of the water tank. I'm in and out so much or I'm sleeping in it and turning on the heater all night long. Um, I'm driving and the heater in the very front is on, like the main cab heater. It's never frozen just because like the air temperature is regulated. If I'm not gonna be in and out of the van, drain all your water. Do you ever get stuck in the van because the doors are frozen? Well, you just saw what happened to the sliding door in Snowbird, yes, it definitely was stuck. Um, the easiest doors to enter are the front two, the main driver's side and the main passenger side door. The back doors and the sliding door, I try to avoid. I just try and isolate it down really to the driver's side door and then you can climb in and maneuver, walk wherever once you're inside. Okay, so next Sunday, I'm really excited about this and I think you will be too. You guys loved when I cooked for you this past summer when I showed you some of the simple van dishes that I make, like remember the tortilla pizza and I've showed you my curry before. So I'm gonna show you some of the winter van meals I prepare. Also, I've never taken you inside my pantry like the condiments and the staples that I have and showed you my dishes. So I'm gonna show you that stuff next Sunday, 7 p.m. Safe travels this week. See you Sunday.